Welcome back to another spoiler-free anime review. Daitarn 3 is the Yoshiyuki Tomino mech anime directly before the original Gundam series. Although Tomino had already created several anime prior to Gundam, I wanted to see the precise turning point between the upbeat and kid-friendly Super Robot series and his subsequent creations known for being dark and mature. Keep in mind, this is currently the oldest mech anime I've seen, and I don't have much context for prior series in the genre. However, my overall impressions of Daitarn was that there was zero oversight and Tomino could just do whatever the hell he felt like because this anime is wild. Where else could you see a giant, robotic, disembodied bathead suck people up its nose? What about demolishing a city with massive playing cards? Hell, they even slip blatant nudity in. In addition to its content being so random, its animation has absolutely no breaks. Everything in this anime is capable of instantaneous movement, as if inertia or gravity doesn't exist. They must have had so much fun with its animation that its story became an afterthought, a fact I was reminded of when they decided to give random bits of introductory exposition 20 or 30 episodes in. Meanwhile, I thought the entire anime was about a polygamous family who tag teams a bunch of ugly alien robots with their giant mech. I'm joking, by the way. There is an actual story involving details about Banjo's origins, family, and ties to the alien race. However, because the anime is halfway over by the time you piece it all together, I consider its entire premise a spoiler, even though it doesn't really matter. Although its story is clearly an afterthought, I thought it was interesting how we'd get tiny slivers of plot development which would occasionally get a little dark. Banjo would channel emotions that would eventually become synonymous with Amuro Ray as he's war wary and desperate to put an end to the killing. I can't say if this is symptomatic of the tides turning or just a trademark Tomino trope, but I see it as a similarity between this and the original Gundam. I also enjoyed finding similarities between his mechanical design and Gundam as Daitarn has the cross on its chest or various other ship designs similar to Xeon or Federation support ships or vehicles. Unfortunately, I didn't spot anything significant resembling a Zaku or anything, but that doesn't mean that early signs aren't here as it took me over a year to watch this anime. I was bound to have missed something. Fans of Naruto will appreciate seeing a Jiraiya reference. Both versions, by the way, were pulled from an ancient Japanese folktale. Nonetheless, the Jiraiya also rode on a giant frog, and Banjo's butler slash mad scientist quickly whipped up a county-sized battleship with several serpent heads named Orochimaru. Ironically, Jiraiya didn't care, but when Banjo presented a life-size snake, which was about the size of a hair to them, that's when he started getting scared. Most episodes follow a formulaic pattern that layers mostly enjoyable aspects on top of each other. So first you've got the episode introduction, displaying Banjo, Reika, and Beauty hanging out, which is comedic in its own right due to both women being in love with him and fighting over him. Then some meganoids come out of nowhere and they all start trash talking each other, which is usually pretty funny. My favorite part of the episodes are when the insults escalate to violence as everyone pulls out a bunch of crazy weapons, like the little boy and Banjo's babes pilot ships helicopters or use a wide variety of guns or explosives. For a 1978 cartoon, they were far ahead of the times for displaying women as being powerful. Sure, one is called Beauty and it's obvious why she's there, but these women can kick some serious ass. They even pilot the Daitarn on a few occasions, but then again so does the young Toto and even their old buddy Garrison. The final part of each episode consists of Banjo summoning the Daitarn to fight the enlarged Meganoid, where things can get pretty wild on occasion, like we see here with the wrestling moves and fast-paced action. Most battles end with a brutal finishing move where the Daitarn harnesses the power of the sun to punch a hole straight through the Meganoid. Although Daitarn 3 may sound incredible, it's certainly an acquired taste that won't be suitable for everyone. While many episodes had me on the floor laughing with its jokes and at its visual inconsistencies, there are a fair amount of monotonous episodes that weren't much fun. Since every episode follows the same formula, viewer fatigue will certainly set in on some of its weaker episodes, so I suggest you limit yourself to one or two episodes a night. 
Die Tar 3 is much more enjoyable with someone to comically nitpick every detail over. For example, you could ponder the mysteries of why Banjo's hands swole so big, or what's the deal with these characters' proportions, and how they forgot to color their main character's eyes in its first episode. It's one of the few anime I think became better over time because of its inconsistencies. Because it rarely takes itself seriously, the bad parts become funny, making the overall experience even better. Don't believe me? Try episode 1. It is a gold mine of comedy that I recommend to every anime fan, whether you're opposed to watching mech anime or haven't seen anything older than 2010. I don't care. The episode is just that funny. Its pacing is so fast that it could have been a 90 minute movie, but somehow they crammed it down into a single episode. My recommendation for watching Die Tarn 3 is to watch one episode a night with a friend. By yourself is fine, but it's more fun to watch with someone so you can laugh at the anime's wonky art and animation. Plus, you and your friend could keep each other in check to make sure nobody falls asleep because some episodes seem to have that effect, at least until they start screaming and flashing lights like crazy. Overall, I give Die Tarn 3 an 8 out of 10. It's honestly a gold mine of comedy and good times with several mind-numbingly boring episodes that prevent it from scoring higher. Die Tarn 3 is so unique and is dripping with personality, I feel like Tomino missed his calling while making all of these dark and depressing anime. Sure, I gave the original Gundam series a 10, but the Universal Century timeline became far too bleak and depressing after a while. I'd love to watch more anime like Die Tarn 3 if it were more consistent, and this even inspires me to watch his older shows such as Zambot, Raiden, and Triton of the Sea. It even provides greater context for understanding why Double Zeta was so strange. I might actually enjoy it the next time I try to watch it. So what are your thoughts on Die Tarn 3, especially if you decide to watch its first episode because of this review? Thanks to Nia Chan for third tier Patreon support, and to all of those who support these videos with Patreon donations or buying anime or manga merchandise through my affiliate links in the video description. Thank you for watching, 